So today we're going to check out one of my favorite vintage watches from Casio. The J50 Running Man watch. This watch was first introduced in Casio's 1982 watch catalog. And it has a lot of sentimental value for me. I remember barely being a teenager and fiddling around with this watch under the covers with a flashlight. The Running Man animation was mesmerizing. And I was pretty much blown away by this technology. Man, those were the days. The term Running Man is really reserved for the Seiko lineup of watches, and technically this is a jogging watch. But nonetheless, the name sticks, and I'm going to go with it. You can see here in the catalog ad that the watch comes with a pace tone, where you can set your steps per minute and your stride length to give you a particularly accurate gauge of your distance covered and your elapsed time. It's pretty cool. But if you actually run like this man, then I'm sorry, but you're going to have to return your watch. There's no reason for that. They also come with a chronograph, a timer, and an alarm. There is no backlight on this model. The secondary version, the J100, also came with a calculator, in case you need to do any complex calculations while you're jogging. But anyway, let's dive in and give this retro classic a fresh look. So a couple of years later in 1984, Casio continued to advertise this watch as a jogger's best friend. It contains module 208 that lets you set your stride up to 9 feet 11 inches and set your pace from 65 to 210 steps per minute. So here on the time screen you can see the date, month, and day of the week along with the time the little running man graphic, and a circular graphic for the timer with indicators for 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes. So what's unique about this watch is the two red buttons on the dial. Casio would actually use this same layout for some of their game watches, like Golf, Cosmo Flight, Soccer, and Space Warriors, just to name a few. The left button is for lap mode and reset, and the right one is for start and stop. And these buttons really don't have any click at all. They're pretty mushy, but they work every time. It's almost like pressing nothing. There are a couple small black rubber gaskets underneath uh, that cushion the buttons. So if you press the mode button once, you get into alarm mode and then press it once again to get into jog mode. From here you can press the adjust button to set the different parameters. So this is where you set your strides per minute and you can move up and down to go anywhere from 65 to 210. So if you go up pretty high obviously that's going to be a fast jogger and you can circle all the way back around for a very slow jog. I tend to keep this at about 130. That seems like a pretty good jogging pace. And then press the adjust button again while you're in this mode and here's where you can set your stride length. Currently mine is set for three feet, but of course you can go up and down here and set your stride length to whatever you want. Obviously that'll change based on how long your legs are and how fast you're running, but that seems to be about right for me. So press the adjust button again and you get back into jog mode. So here's where the magic happens. You press the start button. And jog mode is kicked off. So in the bottom you see the elapsed time and over on the right you see the running man graphic. Up in the top is your distance traveled. So obviously that's calculated by your stride length and your steps per minute.
And then when you're done with your jog, you can just press stop. Of course, you can initiate that again. But check out that Running Man graphic. Man, that was, uh, that was pretty cool back in the day. And then when you're ready, you just press the stop button and press the other red button to clear it out. And there you go. Pressing mode button again will bring you now into timer or chronograph mode. So it might be a little tough to see, but in the top, there is an arrow pointing either left or right. So when you press the left button, you can either go from timer to chronograph mode and back again. So in chronograph mode, obviously you can just press start to kick that off, press stop and clear. And then when you're in timer mode, this one's currently set for 45 minutes. You press stop and the watch will automatically start to tick down and the circular LCD in the top right will also start to clear out those little bars every, I think it's every 10 minutes or five minutes. So as I mentioned before, this watch runs the 208 module. And here's a shot of the snap-on case back. This one is in really good condition. There's no scratches on the crystal at all. And the band is pretty much intact. It's got a really slim profile. So then in 1986, Casio advertised this watch yet again. It was pretty popular. You'll also notice that uh, the Golf watch is listed there alongside the J50. And I used to own that watch and man, I wish I knew what happened to that one. The asking price for that Golf watch these days is about $300, $350. It was a super fun watch. So as far as I can tell, this is the last advertisement for the J50, as future adverts showed only the new model, the J51, even though it used the exact same module, just had a slightly different case. All right, so let's give this one a check out on the wrist before we wrap it up. And there it is, the Casio J50. It's a pretty diminutive watch, very slim profile. But dang, that's a nice looking watch. I really like this one. So there you have it, just a small little piece of Casio history. This is definitely a collector's item, which no doubt inspired the slew of activity and exercise watches for the future. So there you go, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And I look forward to showing you some new Casio watches in the future. Have a great day.